Hi guys, today I'm going to do the beauty product packaging tag. Is it called that? Makeup packaging tag? Makeup packaging tag. Same difference. So, the general idea is I'm going to run through my favourite kinds of packaging, da, da 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 several questions, but I've seen a few of these um, because I was kind of, whilst I was tidying up my room, I know it's not particularly tidy as it is right now, but whilst I was tidying up my room preparing to film, I watched some videos and I asked on Twitter about the tags that were going around and a couple of you suggested this one. So I watched them whilst I was doing that and most of them are all about high-end makeup. So I decided that since I am Miss Budget Beauty, I would do uh, kind of a budget version of this tag. So I have got a few things in here that aren't so budget, but they kind of go with the question. Um, you'll you'll understand as we go along, but um, for the most part, it's almost 100% more affordable beauty products. So, number one, favourite packaging for, and this is kind of blush, lipstick, mascara, da 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 da. So, we're going to start with blush. This is from Sleek. This reminds me so much of NARS. I mean, you know, the e.l.f. ones are even more so a little bit like NARS, but this is so sleek, pardon the pun, and compact, and the colours are so great. The one that I have here is suede. And I just absolutely love sleek blushes. They're so cute and tiny and little. And I think that a lot of cheaper brands bulk out their packaging and make it look like it's so much more than it really is. Like some have got huge, huge packaging for exactly the same amount of product that you get in this. And I think that this is kind of almost a bit of a high-end twist on something very, very inexpensive because they've so streamlined the packaging. I really, really like it. Um, and it doesn't, it feels substantial as well. It doesn't feel cheap and plasticky, it feels like higher end packaging. So although it's very, very basic to look at, I really like it for those reasons. Lipstick is really difficult. What did I choose for lipstick? Um, oh, it wasn't difficult at all. It was difficult to think of it because I was like, oh, I've got so many lipsticks, how am I gonna possibly choose? And I had one thing in mind and it was the um, lip stains from uh, L'Oreal, the ones that are supposed to be like the YSL ones, because obviously, same company. Um, so I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to choose those. I'd totally forgotten about the L'Oreal Caress. I mean, how could this not win? It's something like Dior Shoe How do you say that? Shoe 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 You know what I'm talking about. It's sh Shiseido. Is it Shiseido that I'm thinking of? It's not even Shoe Um But it's just such a high end looking lipstick. It, this just looks so expensive and yeah, it's just fancy. It's amazing. I love it. So that would definitely win in the lipstick category. Uh, mascara is kind of tough because all mascara is kind of basic. Um, so I'm going to just choose one of my favourite mascaras because I like this particular colour combination and it's this one. It's the So Couture Volume Million Lashes. I love the Volume Million Lashes. That is a tongue twister. Um, whole line. This is probably the one that I like the least of them all. Um, because it has a weird smell and the brush is a little bit strange. I do really like it, but there's just something a little bit off about it. Um, but this particular colour combination, this kind of chocolate box combination I really like. And L'Oreal, again, another L'Oreal product. In fact, there are a couple of L'Oreal products here. Um, just do really well with the packaging. Okay. Foundation. Uh, that would be a bit of a strange wild card here, but I looked across all my foundations and yeah, L'Oreal do the Lumi Touch or Lumi Magique, whatever it's called. Um, that's got the rose gold lid and that's very, very nice. It's very kind of swanky looking. But I think that Avon's packaging is so high end. It is a little bit, but then you get kind of Chanel and things like that and I don't think that they feel any more substantial than this really. Um, but this just looks very Chanel-esque. A lot of Avon's products look very chanel -y, and this is one of them. And this is their cream to powder foundation. Um, what is this called? Ideal Flawless Invisible Coverage Cream to Powder Foundation. There you go. And it has this, and then underneath it has a little thing to apply it with. But I just, this is so sleek, and you would never know this wasn't Chanel unless, you know, you saw the big Avon thing on the top of it and it didn't have a CC. But I, just, I think that's very Chanel esque. And then powder, I'm not massively interested in. I have this one that, for the same reasons as the sleek, I like, and it's very, very compact. It's healthy balance. Um, from Bourjois. Um, it's not particularly exciting. It's not something that you would look at and be like, ooh, look at this, it's so nice. Um, so it's not kind of very fancy packaging, but I think that it's really practical. Is that what I'm looking, is that the word I'm looking for? Tell me what word I'm looking for. Eyeshadow, okay, I've kind of cheated and done two here, but I've got one single and one palette. And the single is another L'Oreal product. I think this is the last one. Um, but it's very, very sleek again. It's got this, it's a very, very compact, I'm big on compact things, uh, very, very compact um, 
packaging. It's very small. Um, and then on the inside, oh. <laughs> and I know this isn't packaging, it's the actual product, but it's the packaging of the product. They could have made it look however they wanted it to look. And they've given it this kind of amazing rippled look. This looks so much more expensive than it was, I think. I think this would look at home on any kind of high-end beauty counter and it's L'Oreal. So that, that wins in the single eyeshadow category. And then for palettes in the budget eyeshadow world, Revolution for sure. If you consider that these are similar price or the same, I forget, as uh, Makeup Academy ones, it's just better. It's just better. They've just laid everything out a little bit nicer. It's the black and the rose gold. Everything just, and sleek is the word here, everything just looks sleek. It does. And the Makeup Academy ones look like cheap eyeshadows. No matter what the quality is, they don't look that great in the actual palette. Whereas these look really nice. Question number two, name one brand whose packaging you can't say no to. This would have to be Revlon, even though I've not mentioned them in any of my favourite categories. Um, their lip products just get me. They're not the snazziest. These are basically three of almost identical colours <laughs> that I have across their um, lip ranges. But there's just something about Revlon lip packaging that just makes me want to have one of everything. I have three of these. I have all of these, there's like 20 something of these, and I have nearly all of these ones, like eight or nine or maybe even 10 of these ones. And there's something about the Revlon packaging that makes it so collectible to me, that I look at it, I am like, I need to have a row of those, they all look awesome. So yeah, there's, there's something about Revlon, definitely. I really, really like it, and I can't resist. If, if Revlon bring out a new lip something, it's like, I have to have it. There's nothing else from any other brand that I can, or no other brand that I can think of that when they release something, brand new, I'm like, oh my god, I need to try it straight away. Number three is name one brand whose packaging you think is overhyped. Um, which everyone likes, but you don't. I would have to say it would be Benefit. People collect these, and I've definitely been there. I've had several of them. Um, it's just a bit cheap. It's so expensive. Benefit makeup is not cheap at all, it is expensive. I mean, I talk about kind of MAC products and things, um, and people are like, oh, it's too high end for a budget beauty channel, blah, 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 but it's not as expensive as Benefit. Like, Benefit is full on high end. Benefit is up there with YSL, Chanel, etc. cetera. Um, and yet it kind of feels more like, you have Urban Decay and MAC, which are kind of mid range, but it feels like Benefit is with them, if you know what I mean, because of the target audience being younger, you feel like they should be priced at that point. Whereas then you get to kind of Chanel, YSL, Dior up here, and they're a higher price point because their audience is slightly older and they have more disposable income. And I feel like Benefit have priced themselves out of their core market. If anyone else feels like that, let me know. Um, it just feels that way to me. Uh, and that's why I feel like the packaging is so not great. Some of it's really nice. The Majorette one was much nicer than the previous ones. Um, and it's mainly the boxed blushes. I mean, to be fair, a lot of the packaging now just does not appeal to me. Their lipsticks, I don't like. Um, there's really not a lot that I look at and go, oh, I really need to try that. And it's all kind of, I think, packaged and aimed at a younger audience. And that younger audience doesn't have that kind of money to spend on a blush. I mean, this is like 23 pounds or something. And it's cardboard. I know it's slightly different now. This is the older packaging and now it has a hinge um, not a proper hinge, still cardboard and a mirror in the lid, but still it's not a substantial packaging for something so expensive. Number four, most disappointing packaging for a good product. What did I pick out for that? Oh, I know what I picked out for that. Where is it? Natural Collection lipsticks. 100%. I've talked about these. I had a whole video on them. Really, really nice. Love the formula. Great lipsticks. They're a pound. Like you cannot go wrong. But you can go wrong because the packaging is terrible. One, the lids don't stay on very well. Like, this one actually is not too bad. But I've had other ones where the lids just kind of fall off in my bag, which is terrible. Two, they snap. The lipsticks snap. I've had two of them snap on me. And um, it just drives me insane. So yeah, okay, it was cheap. But you need to know that you can use it without worrying about snapping it. And I'm not particularly hard on them. Other people, well, some people say that it's never happened to them. Some people say they've had every single lipstick they bought from Natural Collection snap. And it's such a good product that is let down by packaging. Okay, the last two questions are best and worst product design uh, or packaging design. I'm gonna go to the slight mid-range here. So I'm gonna move away from the drugstore. You know what I love from the drugstore, from lipsticks. 
um, but I'm going to show you something from MAC and something from Urban Decay. So the one from MAC that is definitely the best design packaging I have seen in a really long time is this and it's from the Aquatic Collection and it's got kind of these faux water droplets all over it that you can feel. It's amazing! It's just one of the best launches from MAC's limited edition collection in a really, really long time. I couldn't have been happier when I managed to get my hands on one of these lipsticks. Um, I definitely am a bit of a hoarder when it comes to MAC lipsticks, especially limited edition collections. I buy them even if I'm not so keen on the actual colours, just because I need to have one of that particular collection because I love how it looks. Um, and so I had to mention it because this has to be the prettiest thing that's in my makeup collection. I just think it's so, so cute. Some of you will hate it, some of you will think it looks really tacky or horrible or whatever, but I just love it. Uh, and the worst, pra bleh, worst product packaging design has to go to Urban Decay. And in fairness to them, they've changed their packaging design since I have this. I used to work for them years ago, um, and this is what their lipstick used to look like. So it looks like this. And it's a lipstick tube, fairly standard, and has a dagger on the end, and the dagger pulls out the lipstick. In theory, this was great. Kind of um, unique, very, very Urban Decay. However, uh, these snapped off a lot. When I worked for them, people would come in complaining all the time that they couldn't open the lipstick once the dagger had snapped off, and it's very, very small and flimsy. I could just snap it off right now um, if I wanted to, but I want to be able to get into the lipstick. Um, not great. Really not a good idea at all. Um, so, just a terrible design, really. Also, they smelled and tasted horrible. I know this is not what this video is all about, and I know this is an old lipstick, but it's always smelled and tasted exactly the same. It smelled a little bit like aniseed or something. Also, that like really, really terrible smell, and it tasted bitter and just awful when you accidentally like you know tasted your lipstick. It happens. We apparently eat like four tubes of lipstick in our lifetime or something insane. Um, so although we don't go out intending to eat lipstick, we do, and it's not nice when it tastes horrible. So that would be the worst of the packaging. But I've, I hope you've enjoyed this tag. I haven't done a tag in ages, it feels like. I probably have done loads. Yeah, I probably did one like last month. Um, but I feel like I haven't done one in ages. And I like these ones because they kind of make you draw on your collection and kind of remember things that you'd forgotten about. Uh, and it kind of starts a conversation because I'll ask you now, what's your favorite drugstore packaging? What's your worst? Uh, and all that jazz, and it kind of, it makes you think about things that you'd forgotten about. So, I really enjoyed this tag, I hope that you enjoyed my kind of drugstore twist on it. If you've got anyone's particular tag that you think I enjoy watching, I've ha found them in the past, I was watching, what was it, I think it was my British tag or something, and someone told me the girl in the tartan scarf had done it because she's um, Scottish. And um, I wanted to see someone that wasn't English that had done that tag, and so I watched her and now I subscribe to her because she's great and you should too girl in the tartan scarf, I'll link her below. Uh, but if you have anyone particular that you think I would enjoy this particular tag from, let me know, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!